Welcome and bienvenidos. I'm Stephanie Valdez, co-owner of the Community Bookstore in Brooklyn, New York. Tonight, Gloria Gervitz joins us to present Migrations, poem 1976 to 2020, in conversation with her translator, Mark Schaefer. This program is presented as part of our ongoing virtual event series with New York Review Books. Now for some housekeeping, if you'd like an audio transcription, you can turn that on at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions for our guests tonight, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen to submit them, and they'll ask some of the questions at the end of the program. There's also a chat button at the bottom through which I'll be posting a link to purchase the book for tonight, if you haven't already. Our next event with NYRB is a discussion of Elizabeth Taylor's novel, Mrs. Palfrey at the Claremont, which will happen on December 6th. Let me tell you a bit more about tonight's guests and then we'll get started. Glor Gloria Gervitz was born in Mexico City into an Eastern European Jewish immigrant family. She was awarded the Penn Mexico Prize for Literary Excellence in 2011 and the Pablo Neruda Prize for Poetry in 2019. Her main body of work is Migraciones, a single poem that evolved organically over 44 years. Migraciones has had different versions in Spanish over the years and has been translated into Swedish, Norwegian, Danish, Polish, Arabic, and Greek. Fragments of the poem have been translated into 18 languages. She now lives in San Diego, California. Mark Schaefer is an award-winning translator and visual artist and a senior lecturer in Spanish at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. He has translated the work of authors from around the Spanish-speaking world, including David Huerta, Belén Copeguil, Virgilio Piñera, Alberto Ruiz Sanchez, and Gloria, Gloria Gerbitz. Schaefer is a founding member of the Boston Area Literary Translators Group. He lives in Roxbury, Massachusetts, the traditional and unceded territory of the Massachusetts and Wampanoag peoples. Now I'll turn things over to you, Gloria and Mark. Thank you, Gloria. Well, first of all, I do want to thank uh, everybody that made possible for us to be reading here tonight, that made the book, the book is here published and that we're having this uh, reading. And I think, like we said, we are going to start with the poetry because after all, this is for poetry. Just by uh, Stephanie, you said that um, the bookstore has been there for like 50 years. And I have to say that I've been writing poetry for 50 years. So we, uh, we have an anniversary, 50 years both. And 44, of course, off and on, writing what uh, Migraciones, which ended up being, without me knowing it, uh, a life project. And after this, I'm starting. <clears throat> Como si tuviera nostalgia de lo que estoy siendo, nostalgia de mí, como si pudiera comenzar de nuevo, como si me mudara a otra casa, como quien repite palabras que son mantras, como un monólogo, palabras que son mantras, como un monólogo desde ti hacia ti, como si fuese yo la que ha comenzado a morir y no tú como si el miedo y el polvo fuesen uno. De arcilla la mañana, de ríos la mañana, y los recuerdos son el puente. ¿Hacia dónde? ¿Desde dónde? Queda una línea de luz no más consistente que una idea, el sol como una bola en el intersticio del día, y en el cuarto tu sueño, profundísimo y dulce, como un animal querido. No tengo el lugar, solo la añoranza del lugar, la rutina y el tiempo que pasa. Sigo el movimiento del sueño, sus huellas pequeñísimas. Sigo el movimiento del río, su peso, sus partículas, su silencio, sus larvas, sus laberintos, las estrellas que flotan como cáscaras. 
que da la mañana, la olvidada, la mañana para no ser vista, la mañana para llorarme, la espesa, la temida, la larga, la indefinible, la quieta mañana y el aire arqueándose bajo las acacias. He construido mis sueños cerca de las rocas. Yo elegí este paisaje árido, esta constancia, esta sed. Nada más triste que esta vastedad que es apenas nada. Turban a la piedra sus sueños. ¿Acaso el tiempo en otra oscuridad es su transparencia? ¿Con qué puedo retenerte? Desde la vieja casa, hoy convertida en restaurante, con sus baldosas desteñidas y sus techos altos, desde los jardines de arena vistos hace ya tantos años, desde mi miedo, ven y dime, ¿me reconoces en ti? ¿Me reconoces? Ven olvidada, ven y lléname de lágrimas, lléname de lágrimas para que pueda llorarte, tocaré tu lucidez y la resaca de este día, te lameré las manos como un animal, mírame, no te desvanezcas, no me dejes, ven sollozada, disuélveme en tu lengua como una hostia hasta la avidez del polvo, no me dejes, déjame en ti, déjame ser en ti, déjame doler en ti, déjame llorarme en ti, no me dejes, arrastrame hasta la desembocadura del día, déjame en su quietud, en su aspereza, y el agua en su silencio de raíz, en su lentitud de raíz, se abre temblando y la mañana se queja y se mece con las viejas palabras, las largas, las sumergidas palabras. Dámelas para que pueda buscarte, dámelas para que pueda abrirme no al conocimiento de ti, sino al confuso presentimiento del camino hacia ti. Desde esas palabras te hablo, desde el pensamiento y la idea del pensamiento, desde ti y el principio que emana de ti, desde el deseo de llegar hacia ti. Y la mañana se abre y comienza Shaharit. Oh hermosura, oh hermosura, oh hermosura, escúchame, donde quiera que estés, escúchame. Hay un vértigo en esta luz, el día se desploma y las golondrinas atraviesan el instante. ¿Qué saben los dioses de los sueños de los hombres? Es en esta luz que me consume en su transparencia donde más te busco. Es en la resequedad de esta mañana imperceptible, derramada, agua en los labios del sediento. Madre, soy yo la buscada. Te he llevado sobre mí sintiendo tu peso. Y el olvido me duele como una herida, la luz se aquieta y te oía dentro de mí, te oía en la desembocadura, naciéndote. Y las palabras se hundieron y el llanto se embebió en la arena y yo me quedé en la orilla. Y había algo entrañable en los días y en el recuerdo de los días. Y me tomó el tiempo de vivir para despertar pero lo más importante no lo dijimos. Era cerca del corazón oscuro de los sauces, donde aún te nombro y me postro ante ti como antes, como siempre. Estoy bajo un cielo pálido, por siempre el pálido inmenso silencio, y era dentro de mí 
como una floración, un despertar al otro lado, y yo quería saber, pero solo me fue dado preguntar. El otoño se tensa como un arco. La lluvia también se desplaza hacia el sueño. Lentamente recupera su sombra, se inclina como un sauce, cae. As if I were nostalgic for the one I am now, nostalgic for myself. As if I could begin again, as if I'd move to another house, as if I were repeating words that are mantras, as if it were a monologue you say to yourself, as if I were the one who's begun to die and not you, as if fear and dust were one. <coughs> morning made of clay, morning made of rivers, and memories are the bridge, where to, where from? A trail of light remains with no more substance than an idea, the sun like a bullet in the crevice of the day, And in the room, your dream, deep and sweet like a beloved animal. I don't have the place, just the longing for the place, the routine and the passing time. I follow the dream's movement, its infinitesimal traces. I follow the river's movement, its weight, its particles, its silence, its larvae, its labyrinths stars that float like husks. The morning's left, the forgotten one, the morning for keeping out of sight, the morning for weeping, the dense, the dreaded, the long, the indefinable, the quiet morning, and the air and arc curving under the acacias. I've built my dreams near the rocks, chose this parched landscape, this perseverance, This thirst, nothing sadder than this immensity that is little more than nothing. The stone is troubled by its dreams. Perhaps its transparency is time in a different darkness. How can I hold on to you? In the old house, now a restaurant with its mottled floor tiles and high ceilings, in the gardens of stone and sand seen so many years ago, in my fear? Come tell me, do you see me in you? Do you see me? Come, forgotten one, come and flood me with tears. Flood me with tears that I might lament you. I'll touch your lucidity and the flotsam of this day. I'll lick your hands like an animal. Look at me, don't disappear, don't leave me. Come, sobbed one, dissolve me on your tongue like a host unto the greediness of dust, don't leave me. Let me in you, let me, let me in you, let me be in you, let me ache in you, let me weep in you, don't leave me. Drag me to the breach of the day. Leave me in its stillness, in its coarseness, and the water in its silence of roots, in its slowness of roots, opens itself trembling. And the morning groans and sways with the old words, the long, the sunken words. Give them to me that I might seek you. Give them to me that I might open myself, not to the knowledge of you, but to the muddled premonition of the path that leads to you. I speak to you from those words, from thought and the idea of thought, from you and the beginning that emanates from you, from the desire to reach you, and morning breaks, and Shaharit begins. Oh, splendorous, 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 listen to me wherever you might be, listen to me. There's a dizziness in this light and the day plummets and swallows pierce the moment. What do the gods know of the dreams of men? It's in this light 
that I'm consumed in its transparency where I seek you most. It's in the parched expanse of this morning, imperceptible, spilled water on the lips of the thirsty. Mother, I'm the one I seek. I've carried you on my back, feeling your weight and oblivion aches in me like a wound. The light hushes and I heard you inside me, heard you at the breach being born. And the words sank and the cry soaked into the sand and I stood on the edge. And there was something beloved in the days and in the memory of the days. And it took me my whole life to wake up, but we never said what mattered most. It was near the dark heart of the willows where I still invoke your name and prostrate myself before you as before, as always. I stand beneath a pale sky always the enormous pale silence, and it dwelled in me like a blossoming. Waking up on the other side, and I wanted to know, but was only allowed to ask. Autumn draws taut as a bow, the rain also glides towards sleep, gradually regains its shadow, leans like a willow, falls. Now I'm going to read from a very different uh, part of, of the poem, um, which we have been calling like the part of the market. I'm going to start from here. <clears throat> Estoy en el placer adentro del placer de darme placer. Y mi nana, dormidísima en la hamaca de al lado, y la casa hundiéndose en el sopor. Y en el zócalo comienza el bullicio del mercado. Hay jugos de naranja y de toronja, y agua de horchata, y de jamaica y de tamarindo, y atole de fresa y champurrado, y tamales de dulce y tamales oaxaqueños, y papayas, y ciruelas, y mangos de manila, y plátanos morados, y plátanos machos, pencas de dominicos y tabascos, sandías más rojas que la sangre, guabanábanas expuestas como sexos, capulines rojísimos, granadas escurriéndose, zapotes negros desbordándose, mameyes abiertos como vulvas, piñas gordas y jugosas, la, la, la fruta de la pasión endureciéndose y el calor metiéndose en los petates, metiéndose en los chiquihuites, metiéndose en las mojarras y en las cubetas rojas de camarones, metiéndose en las langostas, en las patas de cangrejo moro, en las jaivas amarradas, en la sierra para el ceviche, y en las almejas entreabiertas y asustadísimas. En los pulpos plácidos, desmayándose en su tinta, en los ostiones, soñándose en el fondo del mar, en las ostras pequeñísimas, como piedras de río, en los pámpanos blancos de Michoacán, en las truchas de agua dulce y de agua salada, en los esmedregales transparentes y en el robalo y en las carpas de morelos y en el callo de hacha y en los charales con la cabeza rota, en los grandes guauchinangos y en las aletas de tiburón. Y el calor rompiéndose las alas, quebrándoselas entre las bugambilias, quebrando la flor de calabaza y los guauzontles y la vaina para los pájaros, y los rábanos, y los racimos de nísperos, y las mazorcas de maíz, desbrojándose en los costales del café, y en el alpiste, y en las semillas de amaranto, y en los costales de mijo y de frijol, y en los canastos, desbordándose de tanto chile, el chipotle, el morita, el ancho, el cascabel, el guajillo, el chile manzano, el de árbol, el chilaca y los piquín, 
tan chiquitos y tan picosos, y los habaneros, y el mole verde, y el rojo, y el negro, y el amarillo, y el coloradito, y el ajonjolí para todos los moles, y quesos de Oaxaca como bolas de estambre, y anafres, me perdí, y queso de cabra con ceniza, y el panela, y el cotija, y el manchego para las quesadillas, y tlayudas, y tlacoyos, y molcajetes, y metates, y anafres, y sopladores de palma, y en los portales, los rebozos de Santa María, las guayaberas, las blusas de lino de maguey, los deshilados de las monjas de Aguascalientes, los dibujos mágicos de las tejedoras mayas, las playeras con el águila y el nopal que dicen ¡Viva México! Alebrijes afiebrados y enloquecidos, y alpargatas y guaraches y peines de madera y de plástico, y collares de cristal y turmalinas y ámbar y ojo de tigre y mariposas y ángelas y ágatas y onix y ébano y caracoles y peinetas de nácar y de carey y la crema nivea y el champú del tío Nacho, los corazones bordados en punto de cruz y los jabones de almendra, de rosas y de avena y de coco y de manzanilla y de azufre para el acné. Y el calor acaloradísimo con tantos Celsius, desmoronándose en las conchas y en los cuernos, y en las galletas de nata, y en las bañadas de miel, y en las maría, y dulces de arrayán, y ates de membrillo y de guayaba, camotes de pueblo, de puebla, y piñones, y garbanzos, y pepitas, y tabaco para enrollar, y vainilla de papantla, y rajas de canela, y las golondrinas columpiándose en los alambres de la luz, y los filamentos del calor colgándose, y las raíces colgando no sé de dónde a no sé dónde, y árnica, y ruda, y hojas de sábila, y perlas de éter, y manojos de eucalipto, y de albahaca, y de mirto, y de lágrimas, y glorias para las ofrendas, y veladoras, y cirios, y estampas de santos, y medallitas milagrosas, y escapularios, y amuletos para el mal de ojo, y el incienso, y el copal, y el estruendo de las voces, y pájaros llenos de jaulas, y jaulas de pericos con las alas recortadas, y loros verdes mentando madres, y las campanas de la iglesia llamando a misa, y música aquí, y música allá, y bandadas de papagayos, y sensontles de otros, paisa de otros paisajes y de otros recuerdos, y el canto sostenido de los canarios amarillos, <coughs> y el cilindrero dándole vueltas y más vueltas a la manija y a la misma canción. Y un violín triste y flaco, y una guitarra ensoñeciéndose, y un trío desafinándose cantan. Tú me acostumbraste a todas esas cosas, y tú me enseñaste que son maravillosas. Your turn, Mark. I'm in the pleasure within the pleasure of pleasuring myself and my nanny sound asleep in the hammock nearby and the house submerging in drowsiness. And in the plaza, the market starts to bustle with activity. There's orange juice and grapefruit juice and rice milk and hibiscus tea and tamarind water and <coughs> strawberry atole and hot chocolate champurrado and sweet tamales and Oaxacan tamales and papayas and plums and manila and mangoes and purple bananas and plantains, bunches of dominicos and tabascos, watermelons, redder than blood, soursops like vaginas on display, bright red uh, capulín berries, pomegranates dribbling juice, black sapote spilling over 
mamey split open like vulvas, fat, juicy pineapples, and the passion fruit growing hard, and the heat entering the palm mats, entering the palm baskets, entering the sea bream and the red buckets of shrimp, entering the lobsters and the red rock crab legs, the bundles of freshwater crabs, the mackerel for ceviche, and the clams partly opened and altogether stunned, the flaccid octopuses fainting in their ink, the oysters dreaming they're at the bottom of the sea, the tiny oysters small as pebbles from the river, the white pampanos from Michoacan and the freshwater and saltwater trout, the translucent jackfish and the sea bass and the carp from Morelos and the scallops and the charales, their heads smashed, the large red snappers and the shark fins and the heat wings crashing, smashing them in the bougainvilleas, smashing the squash blossoms and goose foot leaves and lovage for the birds and the radishes and clusters of loquats and ears of corn unraveling in burlap coffee sacks and the canary seed and amaranth and the sacks of millet and beans and baskets brimming with chili peppers, the jalapeño, morita, ancho, cascabel, guajillo, manzano, chile de arbol, chilaca, and the pekin, so tiny and hot, and the habaneros, and mole paste, green, red, black, yellow, and, and poblano, and sesame seeds for every kind of mole, and Oaxacan string cheese wound like balls of yarn and ash ripened goat cheese and farmer cheese and aged cotija and manchego for quesadillas and corn tlayudas and tlacoyos and mortars and metates for grinding and braziers and palm leaf fans and shawls from Santa Maria hanging in the stone arcades, guayaveras and blouses made of linen from the maguey tree open work embroidery from the nuns in Aguas Calientes, magical drawings from the Mayan weaver women, t-shirts that say Viva Mexico with the eagle perched on the cactus, feverish and del delirious alebrijes and sandals sold with rope or tire tread and combs made of wood and plastic and necklaces made of crystal and tourmaline and amber and tiger's eye and butterflies and angels and agate and onyx and ebony and periwinkles and ornamental combs of mother of pearl and tortoiseshell and Nivea hand cream and Tio Nacho's shampoo, cross-stitched embroidered hearts and soaps made of almonds and rose petals and oatmeal and coconut and chamomile and sulfur for getting rid of acne and the overheated heat blazing with Celsius plunging into the sweet pastries, the conchas and cuernos and the cookies with clotted cream slathered with honey and Maria cookies and myrtle candies and quince and guava jellies, sweet potatoes from Puebla and pine nuts and chickpeas and pumpkin seeds and rolling tobacco and vanilla from Papantla and cinnamon sticks and swallows swinging on strands of light and filaments of heat dangling and roots dangling from God knows where to God knows where and arnica and myrtle and uh, arnica and rue and aloe leaves and ether capsules and bunches of eucalyptus leaves and basil and myrtle and white lagrimas and glorias for the altars and votive candles and altar candles and cards printed with the images of saints and miraculous medallions and scapulars and amulets to ward off the evil eye and sticks of incense and crystallized copal and a riot of voices and birds full of cages and cages of parakeets with clipped wings and foul mouthed green parrots cursing blue streaks and the church bells calling the faithful to mass and music here and music over there and flocks of lorikeets and mockingbirds from other landscapes and other memories and the sharp trill of yellow canaries and the organ grinder 
cranking the handle round and round and cranking out the same old hurdy-gurdy tune and a violin sad and lean and a daydreaming guitar and an out of tune trio singing tu me acostumbraste a todas esas cosas y tu me enseñaste que son maravillosas well <clears throat> I do have a question. Uh, should we continue and finish the reading? Or should we make a pause for questions? I'm asking you, Este Mark, what do you think? Shall I continue? Shall we continue with the reading and finish with the reading and then open up for questions? Let's read that little last part. The last part, okay. <clears throat> One second, I better put on my glass, my reading glass. <clears throat> I'm going to read the end of the poem. Um, strangely, it was written, I would say around almost 20 years ago. So I do have to say that the book has, it's, it's not, it doesn't go chronologically. It all depends. Some parts were written long time ago and they appear like more at the end, etc. Anyway, I'm starting again. It starts with, a, with an epigraph that says like this. Dijo el rabino Sushya poco antes de morir. Oh, it's, it's in, he's trying to show it. It's in, uh, in Yiddish, it's written in Yiddish and uh, of course, I have the, in Spanish, translated into Spanish and Mark translated into English. Dijo el rabino Sushya poco antes de morir. Cuando esté ante las puertas del cielo, no me van a preguntar por qué no fuiste Moisés, sino por qué no fuiste Sucia, por qué no llegaste a ser lo que solo tú podía llegar a ser. And now my poem says, dice, toca, sientes, sientes cómo te desborda, ese fluir, ese gozo, míralo, no se dice, es tú misma, tú en ti. Hablo de los pulsos, no es la luz, es tú. Tú en luz, el corazón en luz, luz disuelta en clorofila. ¿La oyes? Fluye, se inclina, dócil, húmeda, dice, ¿escuchas? Es tu respiración y lo que hubiese querido ser y más y más. No es que pueda explicar, pero esto soy yo, estos los días. La vida y en qué parte de mí estoy, a dónde, y esta alegría casi azul como un lote baldío, parece un águila, un quetzal. Ey, no te vayas, dice una voz dentro de mí, quédate. Estoy, me dejo estar, oigo tu respiración que es también la mía. Oigo, tu respira, oigo mi respiración, que es también la tuya. No sé a quién le hablo. El viaje en lo más solo necesita ser compartido. Y la luna donde se ahogó Lipo baja hasta el estanque y yo, que siempre soy otra y la misma, aquí, en este año de mi edad, que son todos los años, aquí, en el calor del final del verano, en esto que siento, alta, indómita, como una secuoya, como una yegua joven, súbita, impredecible, y en su vuelo, la palabra, ahí donde la luz se dobla, el sol entre los narcisos, deslumbrado. ¿Qué hago con tanta belleza? Y si me quedara sin palabras, Atrévete, dame, come de mi mano, 
desbórdame, palabra de toda misericordia, vas a dejarme, y si digo, es el alma, digo algo, ¿a dónde es que he estado, que estoy? ¿A dónde se me fue la vida, la vivida? ¿A dónde la por vivir? Y si hubiera sido otra, sería la misma otra. No tengo más vida que esta que me vive y yo con ella, en ella, en esto que soy y en esto otro que también soy y que no sé qué es. Mía de mí, mi vida toda. Y si supiera, ¿qué sabría? Amasijo de luz, desembocadura, la claridad. Como si se le acabara el corazón. Se está así en Dios en lo que llamamos Dios. Y yo ahí, como quien mira, como quien oye, yo la intrusa, la de ti presentida, espera y tiembla el humano temblor de ante ti y falta el aire. Ah, esperada, en tu gozo reclamo lo que colmado colma. ¿Quién es esa que me hace ser la que soy ¿Y para qué? ¿Y por qué es que soy? Siente. Si puedes, siente. ¿Sientes? Inunda, penetra, duélese ahí en su belleza. Duélese en ti. Dice, tómame, ábreme, ábrete en mí. Y la alegría doblega, profundo, duele. Duele su belleza tosca, su silencio duele. Y el cielo de septiembre baja hasta mí, cálido y cubierto de niebla. Y yo, que un día moriré, estoy aquí, en este instante, que es todos los instantes, estoy viva. Thank you. It starts with the Yiddish uh, quote. Shortly before his death, Rabbi Zuzia said, when I stand before the gates of heaven, I won't be asked, why were you not Moses? But why were you not Zuzia? Why did you not become what only you could be? He says, touch. Do you feel it? Do you feel it overflow you? that flow, that joy, look at it. It is unspoken, it is yourself, you in you. I speak of the pulsing, it's not the light, it's you steeped in light, your heart steeped in light, light dissolved in chlorophyll. Can you hear it? It flows, leans, gentle, moist, says, do you hear? It's your breath and what you would have wished to be and more and more. I can't explain it, but this is what I am. These are the days, life and where in me am I, where? And this joy verging on blue like a vacant lot is like an eagle, a quetzal. Hey, don't go, says a voice inside me, stay. I'm here and let myself stay. I hear my breath that is also yours. I don't know whom I'm speaking to. The journey through the loneliest place has to be shared. And the moon in which Li Po drowned drops into the pool. And I, who am always other and myself here in this year of my life that is every year, here in the heat of the end of summer, here where I feel tall, invincible, like a sequoia, like a young mare, fleet, unpredictable, and in flight. The word there where the light bends, the sun astonished among the narcissi. What do I do with so much beauty? And if I found myself without words, be bold, give me, eat from my hand, overflow me, word, in your bounteous mer mercy, will you leave me 
And if I say it's the soul, what am I saying? Where have I been? Am I now? Where did my life go? The one I lived, where the one I've yet to live. And if I'd been someone else, I'd be the same someone else. I have no other life than this one that lives me. And I with her, in her, in what I am and in what else I also am and know not what it is, mine, my own, my life altogether. And if I'd known, what would I know? Needing of life, needing of light, river, mouth, brightness, as if her heart had failed, as it is in God, in what we call God. And there I am, like someone watching, like someone listening. I, the intruder, the one you foretold, wait and tremble, that human trembling in your presence. And there's no air. Ah, you who I've been waiting for in your joy, I ask for that which satisfied satisfies. Who is that who makes me who I am? And what for and why am I? Feel. Yes, you can. Feel. Do you feel it? It drenches, penetrates, aches. There in its beauty, it aches in you. She says, take me, open me, open yourself in me. And joy bows deeply, aches, its coarse beauty aches, its silence aches. And September's sky drops down to me, warm and covered in fog. And I, who one day will die, am here in this moment, that is every moment I am alive. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> I think we are ready to take questions and comments. And um, uh, there is one question so far. What is the original published Spanish edition of this poem? I could only find earlier texts online, not including the latest revisions. I'm the one to answer. Um, fortunately and unfortunately at the same time, the edition that I consider, well, it's the, from the one Mark ended up doing also the version in English is this one here, um, a very simple white book. It's made in Spain. It's made by um, a publishing small house that's called Libros de la Resistencia, Book of Resistance. I'm very happy with this edition. It's a very like clean edition and it's the one, it, like you can see, it's 44 years of in and out of the poem, of, of me doing the poem. And I feel this is the edition that has like, well, the whole poem. The other ones, it's not that they're not worth it or I don't know, I wouldn't know the word. It's just that they're incomplete because the poem took a long time. It took me a long time to realize I was really writing one single poem. So until 2016, I had the poem divided. It was always divided in sections altogether because I already knew it was one long poem, but it still had sections. And then I had almost, I, I don't have another word, maybe it will sound, I don't know. I don't know how it will sound, but it was almost like a revelation. It was ready to go to print uh, in a small edition in Spain. And I suddenly knew just like that. I knew 
it was almost like the poem was asking me to do it, that I had to take out all those divisions, all those epigraphs, also take out the, um, how do you say mayusculas, the, 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 the capital capitals, letters. the capitals, the commas, everything, everything out. Like, let the poem flow by itself, let it be. So uh, you can imagine, um, it, I've always been, I said it in, in, in the other reading, I've always been um, not, not on purpose and not consciously, but I've been like a nightmare for editors and sometimes translators too, because I change things and like this thing, it was ready, like I say, to go to print. And I said, well, it, it, we can't print it like this because this is the way the poem goes. So uh, it, it, was, it was stopped. And I'll be honest, um, I, I assume, I mean, um, well, they told me, when they first told me, we can't stop it. It's already, you know, the, the maquette, the whole thing, it's ready. And I even said, you know why? I'm, I'm willing to pay what has been done because I know it's my fault. And, but it has to be the way the poem is telling me to be. In this, I have to say, so I ended up paying, uh, it was not, it was a very reasonable uh, sum of money to sort of fix the thing, to put it like that. But um, I have to say that over the years, the poem and me have had a very, symbiotic and close relationship. And it's a very organic poem. It has grown and changed with me, without me. So we've been, um, in fact, I, I, I miss my poem now that I decided that I had to come to a point where you have to say, this is it and it's finished. Because I have the risk now at this point in my life of starting maybe to repeat myself or I don't know, I just felt that, how can I say? Look, I feel, I feel a gratefulness that I was able to do it, that I had all those years, 44 years and 50 years of writing poetry to be able to leave the poem the way I left it. The, the way the poem wanted to be left. I'm grateful for that. And I'm also, I, it's a strange feeling. I'm also a little bit like with, like with an empty nest, which is also emptiness because I was so used to, like, like the poem became like a, a cocoon for me. I mean, I was inside the poem and the poem was inside me. And now he's out of me. I'm there, I'm there for the poem. I'll be, I'll always be there uh, with my translators, with readings like the one we're having here now. But I, the poem is now finished. We have a few comments and questions. There's a question from Dick Cluster um, and then I'll get to a question by Stephanie Stevens. And I'm, I've never done this. So I see the answer live button. Oh, answer live. Okay, so I'll say it. Um, oh, wait, it just disappeared. Okay, um, so Dick asked, what is it like, he was asking me, what is it like returning to this book years later and seeing your old translation and rethinking it in light of the passing of time and practice or of new parts? Um, and... Um, there's so much in that answer. I'll pick a few parts that come first to mind. Um, one is that in uh, 2000, I think in 16 or 17, Gloria, you came to me to ask if I would continue, if we don't, we still don't have the right verb, but if I would continue to translate the poem, um, much of it I had translated already and uh, had been published in an earlier edition. There was a lot that was new. There was a lot that was changed 
moved around, added, subtracted um, some big parts like the, the market and more. And um, it, it took me about a, a year, a year and a half to decide whether I could continue or not because it had changed so much from what I knew so well. And people who have read Gloria for a long time, I think, have a, a, their own version of that. Um, uh, I would say, um, I, I would agree, uh, Gloria, that you are a translator's nightmare, but it's the kind of nightmare, more an editor's nightmare than a translator's, but, but it's the kind of nightmare one feels blessed to have. Um, it, it was, a unique challenge to um, come back and see what I had done 20 and 10 and five years, well, 10 years, 15 years ago, earlier. And um, there were issues in, I, I ended up looking at everything over and over again so that I can't even say without looking at the earlier edition what for me, is from the earlier translation because it in in a para in in a almost mirror even more than parallel i'd say a mirrored version of gloria's process of writing my translation ended up following the same path and so the translation that is published by new york review books is like the poem, a accumulation and subsuming and taking up and reworking and retaining of what the translation had been earlier. And I would say more so than the literal working on the translation, it was the challenge of figuring out if I could and then what was my relationship to this new old new and old poem and um i when i first read the new version compared to what i knew from years earlier um i i was asking myself i wasn't sure if i thought it was better or worse or other qualities of positive or negative. And in the end, my decision to say yes to Gloria, I will, I will continue to, I will translate this or whatever the verb is, translate, update, rearrange, follow, maybe the word is follow you. <laughs> um, that it was a decision to, um, that, I was on a journey that I, I joined and um, that I needed to and felt I wanted to continue. And at that point, the question of, did I like it better or worse? Would I have done something or not became irrelevant? And once again, I could follow Gloria. Um, Stephanie asked, uh, I, I think, asked Gloria, can you explain your raices as they are mentioned in the poem? And I, maybe Stephanie, you could, I think I know what you mean, but maybe you could type in a, are you asking like what Gloria's background is or family lineage or, um, uh, and I'll, um, so there aren't any other questions. Okay. Um, your background, your roots, all, all of that. Can you explain your roots as they are mentioned in the poem? I'm a newcomer and can't wait to read it. Um, well, the title migrations that I put when I already had three parts of of the poem that at that time I thought were three different books that sort of went well together, but they were different. Uh, 
and I, they told me it was the first time it was when you discovered me, it was in uh, 1920, este, 1921. Este, 91. Eh, 91. Eh, 1991. Este, no, you know where. Yes. 1921. No. A ver, no. Um, well, 30 years ago. 30, 30 years ago. Okay. Um, it was the first time that this big publishing house in Mexico, este Fondo de Cultura Económica, wanted to publish my poetry. So that's why I put the three parts that I had then together. I already, there were already two of them published in those small uh, press, uh, small poetry press. Um, and they told me, you have to find a, a new title for, for the book. And very quickly, that same day, back in the afternoon, I suddenly said, I think migraciones, migrations, goes with, with what I'm, I'm writing. And it, it ended up really going well because my migrations, there are migrations, real migrations that I talk about that I did not live. I would say I'm the first generation born in Mexico City, but I come from my parents came from what was then Russia and Poland. And um, even though I do have my maternal grandmother was from Mexico, from Puebla, but I do come from an immigrant's family. And there are migrations in my book from outside that are part of my roots, but there are also and mostly migrations inside. When I say insight, insight, not only of myself, but of the reader, if they want to go into the book and really immerse in the book. Because if we see, we, we change a lot in life. I mean, life changes, we change. Everything is all the time moving. We have different priorities in different stages in our lives. Uh, we, we, Sometimes we were very, I mean, let's say with, even with friends, you can have a very good friend for certain amount of years and then suddenly it starts to fade because that person is going into another direction, you're going in another direction. Some stay for a long time. Everything is all the time moving and changing. So the title migration in a way allow me to put together all these migrations the outside migrations and the inside migrations. So that's my answer. <laughs> Are there any other questions that you'd like us to answer or comments to respond to? There are, it says there, there are two questions. Yeah, the, those, uh, there's a comment um, <coughs> about how good it, how great, what a great pleasure it is to hear the poems read um, in Spanish, which uh, gives the reader a, a clear sense of how the lines move and the energy of the lines. Mm -hmm. um, okay, another, another question. Uh, um, uh, a more specific question to talk about the market passage, the choice to find an English equivalent or analogy versus to use the Spanish word for foods, animals, et cetera. So I think that's a, it's a translation question, but maybe you'll have something to say also, Gloria. Um, the, uh, th that's a great question because um, uh, the passage, that's one of the, newer passages um, from the 2018 edition. Um, and uh, so that was something that I was translating from uh, afresh, uh, which I had never translated before. And it went through many, many uh, iterations and generations. And one of the key things that happened was that I brought it several times to the translation group I'm a part of here in Boston um, 
uh, 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 Boston Area Translators Group, or otherwise known as the Dole Club, um, and uh, a very open club. Uh, if anyone is in Boston and would like to know about it or know someone, um, I can put my email in the chat and you can contact me. Um, so I, um, let's see, um, I brought it to the group, some of whom uh, speak and translate from Spanish and some of whom translate from other languages and don't know any Spanish. Um, but have questions and, and are excellent readers. And what they helped me do in over several, over time actually, was to bring back more of the Spanish and some of which have strong echoes and roots in Nahuatl, among other things, and to find a, or try and find a balance where I had as much of the Spanish there so that what you heard was this, the market in Oaxaca um, while not confusing readers. So what's that balance where I can have some Spanish in, keep, keep Spanish in there without the re English speaking reader getting lost, but knowing, for example, that they're hearing a series of names of different Chiles, even if they don't know those Chiles. Um, and uh, it really, the, the talking this out with um, people and hearing their questions and responses really helped me be more daring than I would have been otherwise. Um, and so I think there's a lot more of the market that is there than if I had just translated it. I mean, I don't know how you would even translate some of the words into English because they don't exist in English, but there's more than, and, and um, it was a, a process of many, uh, much feedback and a, and a lot of time. I, I have to add, uh, Mark, that most of the translations till now of Migraciones into other languages uh, did very much what you did. I don't know their process exactly, but they, they ended up leaving many of those words just the way they are in Spanish, because in, especially in the Nordic countries where um, like they, they seem to like a lot my poetry um, because I've been translated for the third time in Swedish and then uh, they're finishing the translation in Danish and there's already an Oregon translation uh, from uh, is the two, let me see, 218, yes. Uh, so what I want to say with that is um, that they ended up leaving most of these words a little bit like what you did. They decided not to try and find an equivalent in their language, but just sort of respect the, the, the words the way they were because they, in a way they were almost untranslatable. And mm -hmm. like you just said, for example, even though they don't know the this Chile or that Chile, but most people know what Chile is. Mm -hmm. Just what you I, said. Yeah, I think I actually what, I went even further and what talking with, getting the feedback and thinking about it and trying some more helped me do was, I, I decided to put in more than just the required Spanish, more than just the words that couldn't be translated. So, um, for, so for example, um, piquin, like you, it's Chile piquin, so that's just piquin. But um, metate, I could have said grinding stone or something like that. And so I, I, what I ended up doing was trust trusting and demanding that the reader the english speaking reader enters into the world which is happening in spanish even if they're understanding it in english and and experiencing more of the spanish than they have to because it would bring them into the sights and sounds and smells and all of that more so i think i got bolder than i would have been um, and more demanding, 
Um, there is a question in the chat from Shay Youngblood. Hi, Shay. There is, um, I, I thank you for this magical reading. Um, I love how you speak of the poem talking to you. So this is to you, Gloria. There's so much music in your poetry. How is your work influ How is your work influenced by music? I don't know because I have to say I love silence. I really like silence, uh, and I have discovered different different kinds of silence. And I think I like silence because I sort of submerge myself in this silence that allows me to hear like the music of the words. If I would be, if I would write hearing music, uh, the music will, wouldn't let me hear the music of the words. And then I don't know why I just, I really like silence. I like very much to be in silence. In that sense, um, a little bit like if I, I live myself like in a convent. Sort of. Well, I would like to ask the question. I, I, without disagreeing with what you're saying, which I can't disagree, a little bit farther in the marketplace, there's some more music. There's another song, and at the beginning of the poem, which we didn't, um, we didn't uh, read, there is a black woman singing, and and I don't remember if there are other songs, but there's definitely. And the sonata at the beginning, the grandmother's playing the sonata. So their music appears quite a number of times in the poem. It appears, but um, the way I'm answering the question is if when, I, when I'm, I mean, when I've been connected with a poem and writing the poem, if I, because many writers like to write like with, with, with music, I mean, when I say music, maybe just in the background or something, and me, no, I, I, like I say, I really like silence. That doesn't mean that I don't like music, I do. But mostly, it's, it's, it's not strange, but I really, really, I, I won't even say like, the music that really hits me, it really gets to me. It's those boleros, that uh, romantic, sentimental, uh, well, Mexican boleros, but especially I discover a little later the Cuban boleros, which I think most of them are even harder, better. Uh, and um, of course they can also be quite, uh, the word in Spanish is cursi. A little, it would be, how, how would you translate cursi? Um, kitschy. Uh, yeah, a little kitsch. Some of them are kitsch. But still, I don't know, they have something that it really touches me. I know that I also like them because um, my mother used to love the boleros. She used to hear a lot of the boleros. So in a way it was the music I heard when I was uh, a very, very young woman. I mean, probably, I don't know, between 10, 11, 12, 15, she always liked to, my mother liked to stay. She liked to have like music like all the time, strangely, just the opposite of me. And mostly she, she, uh, she listened to, bol to boleros. So they stay with me. In fact, many of the boleros, uh, which of course I, I mean, they had to do, you know, with, with uh, well, with, with young men that dated me and with romantic things in my life. But most of the boleros, really remind me of my mother more than, I mean, at certain moments they had to do with whoever I was interested in or was interested in me. But now, when I say now, when this now has been for many, many years, uh, in general, they, it's like a connection that I still have with my mother. I am going to add something because I think it's important. Um, one of the, the voice that leads the poem is really one voice. They have said that if it's many voices, it's really one voice, but it's a voice that at the same time gives voice to other voices, like the mother, the grandma, in a way, both grandmothers, the nanny, etc. But 
um, I would say that the the main the main personage that this voice is speaking to is the mother. I would say the mother, the archetype of the mother. Of course, that archetype is based in many things in my own mother, but it's it it transcends my mother. It's not my mother, but it comes from there. And I also know it has to do because I I did have um, one of the big enigmas enigma of my life is my mother. I, I, I can see now that many, many things that were very important, we never said them. Uh, she, was, she was not an easy mother, I have to admit that. I love her. Oh my goodness, I really love my mother like nothing. And, and I think she loved me a lot, but she didn't love me probably the way I needed to be loved. And she was distant and she was cold and she was not an easy person. Maybe that also allow me to write. So the, the, the main uh, interlocutor, I wouldn't know that word in English now. How, how would you translate interlocutor? That the voice of the poem is speaking is the mother, is to the mother. The one with whom one's speaking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's, um, it's 12 of nine and, um, uh, there's still people here, but I think we should probably wrap it up um, unless there's maybe one more question. We, we are both very excited um, uh, since it's only been three or four decades of uh, waiting for this to happen. Not that Gloria was only <laughs> for an English speaking audience, but that the poem increasingly deserved a larger and larger reading public and so um, we could probably go on for another hour but I think we'll probably wrap it up to make this a reasonably length event <laughs> is any does any <coughs> other one last question or I'll, I'll jump in with a question. Um, what will you work on next, Gloria? Mm -hmm. What did you say? Stephanie? What will you work on next now that you're an empty nester? I guess I'm, I'm starting to, I'm doing other things. Uh, my life has had many changes. It was very strange. I have to say, uh, I think as you, many of you know, I'm, I'm really in my late 70s. And strangely, I never imagined the 70s were like that, not at all. I always thought, you know, you're in your 70s and you're an old person. And it has been the most creative, the most interesting, the most challenging, the happiest decade of my life. So I don't know, I'm involved in different things. I do feel that emptiness, I do, but I'm, it's also filled with many other things. In fact, it was in this, this few years, this, this decade that I made probably what has been the biggest change in my life, which was leaving Mexico City because I fell in love like, like never ever before in my life. And that's why I'm here in San Diego. And it was not easy at all because as we all women know, men are, more coward <laughs> and it took a long time until he in a way decided but now i'm i'm here because i married uh he's he's originally from mexico city but i married him i mean he asked me to marry him and i i did and we've been married only three years now but this went on for more than 10 years and that's the reason i'm here that's the reason oh. i'm here uh, like, order... like they say, love moves mountains. Well, it did. I, I never, ever imagined I would leave Mexico. And I'll, I'll just add that um, despite COVID, you are being uh, asked to read from your work in various parts of the world. So you're not just sitting at home. You know what? 
excuse me one minute because an airplane is passing by and I lost a little bit of your voice. Could you repeat it, this day, please? I said that in addition, you're, you're being asked despite COVID to read it around the country and, the, and in different parts of the world. So you're not just sitting at home. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. And the poem isn't done with you yet. Mm? And the poem isn't done with you yet either. It sounds like. It sounds like you're. But in a way, you know what? I'm still. I'm still with a poem because, um, like, I'm with my translators. When I say that, is they have questions and I try to answer them the best way I can. Mostly, they're questions about the meaning, um, the meaning of certain things, and. I, I do miss, I'm not a traveler, I have to say that. I'm, I'm not really a traveler. I think I like more like to be home and my routine and everything. But I do miss those invitations for readings and all that. And I always find interesting people. There's, it's always an experience. I've learned a lot. And of course, I, now I see that I miss all that because with this horrible COVID, I've been sort of like almost everybody, we're, we're all, in fact, look, in, instead of having this, me being there, we're doing things in Zoom. Well, I, Zoom I mean, fortunately, we have this, but um, I think I, I miss, I miss the presence of the people. It's a very, it's a different feeling. Sometimes in the Zoom readings, I have a feeling, not, I think, no, not so much, but a little bit. The feeling that I'm, I'm almost reading to myself because you feel different if you're in a place and, and people are there, then you feel like the yeah. energy of the people, the, the, it's different. It's very different. I miss, I miss people. I miss the closeness. I miss the, what we all miss, let's, let's be honest. It, it has been, it hasn't been easy. Someone in the question and answer earlier on said, um, uh, I can't find it now, but um, this is just what I needed for this these times. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us to present your book. It's beautiful and we look forward to um, being able to have it in, in one the work in one place. Um, felicidades, congratulations to both of you on this beautiful translation. And we hope to see you in person in New York sometime. I hope so too. And I really thank everybody for making this possible. And I really, Mark, really, really, uh, I mean, I, I hadn't hear you like read the translation. And um, I know I've been lucky with my translators, but this is the only translation that I can judge by myself. And I can say that I couldn't have had a better translator. And I think you did a terrific job. I said it and I can, and I will always say it. There are some parts of the poem that they're so very well translated that they almost seem like they were written originally in English. And that's, I mean, for a translator, uh, well, that's what, what else can we say when it seems it was written in that language that it's not really the original language. I think that's every translator's goal is that a reader gets well, that you, much you have, that a reader gets that much of your poem. Lo lograste. You did it. You made it. And I'm I'm really thankful and I'm very happy that you ended up saying, okay, I'll continue the journey with her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm very um I, I don't know. I think I was very lucky that you decided to continue. You did a terrific job, Mark. Mm. And uh, that- Thank you, uh, I was lucky now too. That were, are going to be able, if they're interested in reading the book, in reading the book in English, they have an excellent, excellent translation. 
So, and Wonderful. again, thank you for everything. Thank you for the invitation. And let's hope that uh, it will happen perhaps in sometime person. next year uh, in person. Great. Well, we, we toast you both from afar and thank you for joining us for the evening. Um, good night, everyone. You can um, find the book on our, on our website, a communitybookstore.net. And um, we hope to see you again at one of our other NYRB programs. Thank good you. night, everyone. Bye. Right. And thank you. Thanks.